Rugby World Cup 2023, folks. Wallabies taking on Portugal in what is, in all likelihood, their last game of this Rugby World Cup campaign. Portugal's been a bit of a good news story of this Rugby World Cup, with teams like Romania and Namibia kind of getting flogged. Italy uh, by the All Blacks and teams like that. Portugal have been pretty good. Good against Wales. Kind of a, a loss that was closer than many people expected. Only just conceded a fourth try bonus point to the Welsh. And then a draw against the Georgians. But they haven't managed to snaffle a win at World Cups just yet. To say Australia has been disappointing is a bit of an understatement. Obviously they didn't pick a bunch of their veterans for this campaign. They have been without Will Skelton for their last game. Without Tupo for their last game. And such is the case with this one too. Um, so yeah, one last throw of the dice. See if they can go out with a win. We'll go through some squads, some stats, predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts. There's no history between these sides. It's the first ever meeting. So that's a little bit of history in itself for you guys who um, like that kind of thing. When teams get to play each other for the first time, I always find it uh, something a little bit special to, to get that kind of groundwork laid. Um, but for Australia, when they've gone with their lineups, they've... Um, I wouldn't say it's a history-making Wallaby side, but it is a changed Wallaby side, which is giving at least a few guys a little bit of a taste of that Rugby World Cup experience. Some of the guys who haven't yet been in the squad just yet. The front row, though, is the same. Gus Bell, Dave Parecki, and James Slipper. Same, same. James Slipper actually looked the better of the two tight heads scrummaging, even though he's a bit of a... Uh, he's not really a specialist. He's kind of a part-timer as a tight head. With uh, the absence of Tupo, they've been forced to play Slipper there, but he looked good against Wales last week. The Aussie scrum kind of seemed depowered when he went off. Frost and Arnold are in the second row, and Frost is kind of one of the good news stories about this Wallabies campaign, I would say. Uh, he's looked really good, especially at line-out time, which is one of his key areas. Tom Hooper, Fraser McCright, and Rob Valtini. That's the back row, so Hooper switches to six. McCright's up from the bench, and Valtini continues on at eight. Those are the Aussie three top tacklers at this World Cup, so there's a lot of tackling in that back row. McDermott and Donaldson, 9-10. Kind of an attacking 9-10. I mean, McCright, not McCright, he's a back rower. Uh, McDermott is a uh, the top offloader in this Aussie team for this World Cup. But Donaldson's one of the top guys for clean breaks. So between the two of them, I know he's been playing a bit of fullback, but between the two of them, there is some running in that 9-10 combo. Fouquetti and Parise are two of you guys who get a crack with uh, Karevi and Pattaya not being selected. So it's good to see these guys get a chance before the World Cup in all likelihood comes to a conclusion. Mariki Korambedi on the left wing has been surprisingly blunt in his attack. Like, usually he's one of the better weapons in that Aussie back line, but I feel like he's been overshadowed by Nawani Tawase on the other wing, who is selected for this game, and he's the top guy alongside Donaldson for getting clean breaks on this Aussie side. And then Callaway is there at 15, so second game in two weeks for him. Uh, Bench-wise, Fasta Scoop and Fatal Masili are the front row replacements. That's the same as last week. Same with Leota. As your lock cover, Josh Kemeny gets a crack, so he comes into the 23. Good news for him. Before the World Cup is done, finds Lila Wasa. Likewise, and then Gordon and Vunivalu will come up from the bench. So it's a mixed lineup for the Wallabies. For Portugal, man, and as I said, I've been pretty impressed. They've looked pretty good for a side, which I virtually never get to see play. I do feel like they've won it, been one of the good news stories. They've kept things pretty stable. They've brought in David Costa, though, a loose head prop. So he is one of the changes to the 23. Otherwise, Hooker and Tighthead are the same. Jose Madeira has been, or Jose Madeira has been there in the second row. One of the more impressive players in the Georgian, Georgian, Portuguese lineup. Um, you know, good in the air as well. Good tackler. They brought in Bello up from the bench alongside him in the second row. David Wallace and uh, Thibaut de Freitas likewise come into the back row at six and eight from the bench last week. Nicolas Martins continues on at number seven, and I can see why, because he's Portugal's top tackler. So he's been getting through a lot of work and is actually pretty useful on the carry as well. Uh, same 9-10 combo, Portela, the number 10. Got a pretty tidy offload on him too. Got man of the match against Georgia in that draw. Appleton and Benicourt continue on in the midfield. But Storti is probably the man of the moment. Two tries against Georgia. Four clean breaks in this World Cup. Looks like an absolute lethal weapon out on that right wing. And then Nuno Susagueres, the, um, the fullback, is the top carrier for Portugal. So they've got some attacking threats uh, in that Portuguese back line, which is pleasing to see. Bench-wise, they have brought in one, two, three, four, five guys from outside the 23, maybe looking for some fresh legs off the bench to keep things uh, as competitive as they can. So the starting lineup is mostly stable with a few bench and starting changes, uh, whereas the bench itself has seen a bit more rotation. As I said, maybe that's looking to get some guys with fresh legs at the end. Uh, it is on a Saint-Étienne. It is a 5.45 lower kickoff, which is 4.45 in the morning here in New Zealand, 
which is going to be even worse for you guys in Australia. So I'll be curious to know if you Australian fans are getting up to watch this one. Or are you going to give it a miss? Or are you going to watch it on demand? Because, um, yeah, the campaign has just not gone that well, has it? Is anybody checking out? Or are you still kind of staying there every game? Uh, Nika Amashukeli, the Georgian, is the ref. So fingers crossed he has a good game in this first historic meeting between these sides. Uh, Predictions-wise, the bookies have got the Aussies by 27 and the rugby forecast algorithm says by 26. So the Aussies are supposed to get a win, but it's not supposed to be a 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 point hiding. So we will see. The Aussies will certainly have a point to prove. But as I said, the Portuguese have been a good news story. You guys let us know your thoughts and um, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you again soon. See you later.